So there's a lot of types of aquastats out there, but today we're going to talk about triple aquastats. We're going to be talking about the 8124 here in particular. Now, whenever you get into triple aquastats, there's two terms you're going to hear a lot out there. One is a cold start boiler and a warm start boiler. Now, the difference is on a cold start boiler, basically what that means is that the boiler will be allowed to continue cooling down all the way to room temperature so long as there isn't a call for heat. And as soon as there is a call for heat, the boiler will fire up and meet that demand. A warm start boiler, on the other hand, is one in which the water temperature inside the boiler needs to be maintained above a certain point at all times. And this is something that's very common in uh, boiler systems where you have a domestic hot water coil running through the boiler itself. So rather than a standalone water heater with its own gas valve and burner system, the hot water from the home comes from the boiler. So obviously we don't want the boiler to go cold, otherwise we wouldn't have hot water. So a triple aquastat helps achieve this goal. We have not only a high limit, which is what you're gonna find on pretty much any normal aquastat, you also have a low limit setting, and that allows us to determine at what temperature our boiler needs to be maintained in order to provide domestic hot water. So let's begin with the high temperature limit. This is the maximum temperature we want the boiler to fire up to, and this is usually the temperature setting for our domestic heat throughout the house. So I have it set at 180 right now. Now this temperature setting has a 10 degree differential in which once it hits that set point, then once the boiler water hits 180 degrees, <clears throat> it'll shut off the burners and it will allow the temperature of the water to drop 10 degrees before it refires the burners up again to bring it back up to that maximum. So we're just gonna bounce back and forth 10 degrees between that setting 180 and 170 when the burners fire back up just to maintain that boiler water so long as there's a call for heating throughout the home. Now, as soon as that call for heat is satisfied, once the uh, boiler water stops dropping below 170, it'll continue dropping because there's no need to call for heat and so we don't have to fire the boiler up. And that water temperature will continue dropping until we get to our set point on our low limit here. Now our low limit also has a 10 degree differential that's fixed just like our high limit does. So right now I have this set at 160 degrees. If the boiler water were to drop below that 10 degrees to 150, the aquastat is going to act activate the burner circuit to start the boiler up even if there isn't a call for heat. So that 10 degree difference, same as the uh, high limit, is gonna go down 10 degrees below your set point. Now your differential comes into play at this point. Uh, we have a differential anywhere between 10 and 25 on here. So if I had a differential of 10, what that basically means is that when my boiler fires back up, whatever temperature that is, it's going to add 10 degrees before it shuts down again. So if I have my temperature set at 160, the boiler will will fire up at 150 and it will bring it up 10 degrees to 160 and then it will shut back down again. If I increase that differential to 15, all right, it will drop 10 degrees below 160 down to 150. It will fire up at 15 degrees and at 165, it will stop firing again. If I increase that differential to 20, the Boiler water will drop below 160, hit 150, the burner will fire up, it'll bring it up 20 degrees to 170, and then it'll stop the burners again. So your differential is going to be added to whatever your set point minus 10 plus your differential is when the burners will cut out whenever it's maintaining a minimum temperature. Now this differential, it does a little bit more for us than just determining when the burners fire up and fire back out again. It also determines when the circulator pumps can run. So it is also capable of cutting power off to C1 here, which is what our circulator uh, runs off of the power there. Now the whole point in cutting out the circulators at this particular time is if the, let's say the boiler is at 160 degrees, right? It starts dropping down to 150 and the burners turn on at 150. Now right as the burners turn on, your heating system calls for heat. So what happens is, is your heating system is run on a loop, right? The water comes out of the, bit, the boiler, runs through the baseboard and returns back to the boiler again. So on a call for heat, you're immediately pulling hot water out of the boiler, but you're also pushing all the cold water in the piping and the baseboard back into the boiler again. And that cold water coming back is going to drop the temperature of the boiler water down below that 150. So 
Imagine if you're in the shower and then your heating system kicks in and if the circulator pumps don't hold out, um, they were gonna start drawing off that heat off the boiler. The cold water comes back into the boiler. The boiler water temperature drops down to 140, 130, and while you're taking your hot shower, it starts getting cold. So the whole point in locking out the circulators for that little brief amount of time is to prevent situations like that. Okay, so here we have a schematic of our triple aquastat here, um, and we have a, another relay in the schematic now, but we're not gonna pay attention to that yet. We're just gonna focus on this uh, aquastat right here. All right, so let's follow the power. We got our L1 and L2 right here. All right, so we'll follow the power in, um, and it comes right to our transformer, and then it branches off comes to an R terminal here. Now this R terminal here, this is the R terminal um, right below your low differential knob. Oh, so that's the red wire going to the R terminal there. And you can see here we have two contacts. We have one to the left between R and W, which is normally open. And we have one to the right here between R and B, which is normally closed. Now, when you're when your burners turn on on a low temperature, so let's go back to our set point being 160, uh, when the temperature drops down to 150 again, this contact is going to be closed and it's going to energize this circuit. Now B is connected to ZR and that comes down and when we trace it to B here. So we got B and B on this side here, right? So that is the B on top of your low limit switch there. That's the one right here. And you have the B on top of your high limit switch right here. So it goes through the high limit, which should be closed. All right, that remains closed until we actually hit the high temperature set point, which is 180. So we're well below that, that will be closed. We go to the R terminal here, and that will be the yellow wire below your high setting knob. All right, and then from there, it goes to B1, which fires up our burner circuit. And this is our neutral coming all the way back, up, here, and out. Okay, so this is basically the arrangement that allows us to bypass everything, fire up our burner circuit, and keep things going until we hit that differential set point, whatever we set it for. So going back to our example at 160, when it drops down to 150, this contact will close, our burner will fire up, we will bring it up to let's say 165 if we had a differential 15, and then this contact will open. And then at that point, what happens is this contact will close. Now, once this contact is closed, once we reach that 165 degrees and our burner shuts off, this contact will be closed and our circulator will be able to run again if there's a call for heat. So if this thermostat calls for heat, it's gonna power up this uh, coil right here. It is gonna close this relay here, which we can see goes to C1 to power our circulator. And it will close this relay here, as we can see, goes to our burner. And from this point on, we are going to continue firing all the way up to high limit as long as there's a call for heat. Now, if there's not a call for heat, this contact will remain closed, but these will remain open. And so nothing will happen. The contact will remain closed until our temperature drops 10 degrees below our set point. Again, at which point they will reverse. This one will open, this contact will go back closed and the whole process starts all over again. All right, so now we have enough information to really dive into what ZR and CC are really for. The only time you're going to use this is if you have multiple zones with multiple circulator pumps. Now, regardless of whether we have one circulator pump or six circulator pumps, we still need the ability to lock out those circulators on our heating system during that brief warm-up period with low boil temperatures. So if we look at the schematic here, we could see the terminal, the contact between R and W is open, right? And from W, it connects to ZC. Now ZC, you run that out to an external relay, right, that has its own circulator pump and its own thermostat. So when this 
contact is open between R and W, we will not have power up to ZC, which means we will not have power to this transformer here. And without power on this transformer, even if this thermostat calls, this coil here will not get energized. And if that coil cannot get energized, we cannot close these contacts here. So on this particular relay, five and six is for our circulator. Three and four is the power coming from L1 here. Okay, it's diving into three. And when that contact closed, it's number four goes to our burner circuit. So when our boiler is at 160 degrees, it drops down that 10 degree fixed differential to 150. This contact closes, this contact will be open. Our burner circuit will fire up through ZR and we will come up to our, whatever our differential is set at. So let's say it's 15, we come from 150 up to 165 and then these contacts will reverse. This contact will open, this contact will close. We will have power from R to W. That sends power from W to ZC. That powers up our transformer here. That allows 24 volts to travel through. And if this zone is calling for heat, it will power up this coil, pull in these contacts. Circulators can now run and our relay can now independently call for heat on boiler and run up to our high limit setting. So you can look at ZC here as uh, our equivalent to C1, all right? Only ZC is feeding multiple circulators with multiple zones, whereas C1 is just for this one circulator here, right off the boiler. Um, a lot of times you might not even have a circulator hooked up to C1. You'll have nothing hooked up to C1 at all, and you will just have a uh, your voltage coming off of ZC and ZR. Now, this is not the end all know all of triple aquastats. There's certainly a lot more to it. They can get pretty complicated. There's a lot of different arrangements that these things can be wired up. So there's plenty left to learn, but these are the fundamentals. This is enough to kind of get you started and get your bearings straight so that as you dive deeper, you kind of have a path. So hopefully that helped and I hope I see you guys on the next one.